These are the best devil fruit ideas in the history of the One Piece world. Bearing in mind that we now know that devil fruits each represent the innate desire of one individual who wanted that particular ability above all else. And look, all desires are not created equal. Where one person may wish to become a mythical phoenix man, another person's paramount desire may be to simply do their laundry in a more time efficient manner. Hmm. To each their own. However, to some, much, much more than others. Because here are history's best devil fruit ideas and the phenomenally lucky individuals who got to make use of them. And to kick things off, you know what they say. When life closes a door, a horned cow assassin man will appear and open another. It's not a great saying because the assassin part implies that said life is now probably over. However, this is a damn fine devil fruit regardless. In fact, I think that the Doa Doa no Mi is a strong contender for the most underrated power in the entire history of fictional fruit. It's a very simple concept as well. The Doa Doa no Mi allows its user to create the aforementioned doors anywhere they want. Through these doors, the user gains access to a pocket door mention where they can elect where to exit back into reality. Thinking about it, it's a devil fruit that more or less grants Luffy's ultimate dream of freedom because you can basically go anywhere. And you don't even need to be Luffy because this fruit is useful to everyone across the full spectrum from Shanks to Junkyard Shanks. Although neither of them are great examples because one very, very strict requirement of opening doors is the possession of an arm to do the opening. But I just love the simplicity and creativity of it. It's not the most powerful devil fruit, but like honestly, a lot of the most powerful devil fruits are just plain boring. Like, oh, I can make a lot of fire, go me, aren't I a clever fire fruit man? But it takes a true visionary to see the potential of doors. Stepping into Logia Town now, and it's become rather unpleasant after new neighbor Blackbeard moved in and started letting his horse defecate on our front lawn. However, he did come equipped with an insidiously genius devil fruit, the Yami Yami no me. Described as sinister with a foul tasting texture, Blackbeard serves as the primary antagonist of One Piece. And this is one of the best ideas because it's just so meta. Not to be confused with Facebook's meta, which is still one of the worst ideas. But POV, you're the Yami Yami guy. You see all of these people using magical fruit powers and your response is, F all of those guys because I want the power to cancel out their powers. <laughs> it's like you and a friend each get granted a wish by a genie, but you get to wish first and your wish is that your friend doesn't get a wish. But in addition, in addition to that, the abstract nature of darkness has allowed versatile vagueness to take place, with its user now able to mess with gravity and even gain access to a black hole pocket dimension. And I feel like it's worth lingering on the concept of darkness, because this is the only Logia that focuses on an element that doesn't actually exist. Darkness is simply the absence of light. Or to put it in a more relatable way, darkness is the Usopp and light is the Asop. These two concepts cannot coexist together, or at least that's what Yasop's excuse for abandoning his son was. Although the concept of absence is also quite curious with a character all about abundance. Whether it's wealth, body hair, or kilograms, Blackbeard has it all. Except for teeth, he's, he's missing quite a few of those. But I can only conclude that this fruit must have been the dream of someone unable to dream. Someone who couldn't experience what it was like to just slip away into the void. And so it's a very interesting, albeit incredibly dangerous fruit idea. Next up is quite possibly the most useful fruit in the entire series, the Hana Hana no Mi. The one that allows people to sprout body parts, full bodies, full er bodies, and even become a full on demon because why not? By the way, before we get into this, have you ever wondered what those things on Giant Robin's chest are? Because if you thought breasts, then you are very, very wrong. Because according to Nika Robin herself, those are onions, which was revealed again by Robin herself in the volume 102 SBS. But if anything, that only makes this fruit better. It's another one of those simple but brilliant ideas. And every single person in this world's lives would be revolutionized by this fruit straight out of the box. You could use it as Etchiro to himself dreams by having more hands to draw, or even for fight battling, which reminds me of one of my all time favorite Robin lines, you don't understand. Power, speed, they're useless against me. And that line may as well be the dialogue equivalent of pneumonia for all of the chills it sends through my body. And for all of the hand puns that one can make with this fruit, I think the most appropriate is always going to be that idle hands are devil child Nico Robin's plaything. Now hold up there. Yes, this is a video praising the best devil fruit ideas. However, that will in no way stop me from judging the people who had said ideas. And here I'm referring specifically to what I designate as the try-hard fruits. Abilities specifically geared to min-max and even essentially break the entire system. Fruits crafted by the dreams of those who believe that if you are not playing optimally, then you are not having fun. The Hobby Hobby no Mi used by Sugar is one such example because it is essentially four powers crammed into one. Because this particular dreamer rocked up to the magical fruit machine and said, oh great fruit deity, grant me my one wish, which is to turn 
people into toys when I touch them. All right, sounds easy enough. And when I touch them, they automatically become my toy slaves. All right, that, well, that's kind of dark, but we can work with this. And also when they become my slaves, everyone who knew them loses their memories. Uh-huh, so now you want me to make a fruit that manipulates people who weren't targeted by the fruit. Uh-huh, sure, sure, anything else? And also for reasons, I become immortal. This fruit was dreamt up by the same person that you would never want to play D&D with. And somehow it's not even the worst example. That would be Viola's Girogironomy. Oh great fruit deity, grant me my one wish, which is that I want to be able to read people's minds, but also like see through their bodies, their clothes, their skin and their bones. I really want to see through the bones, they're like bones. Oh, and also I just like to see everything within say a 4,000 kilometer radius. Oh, and if anyone tries to attack me, I'm going to cry whales at them. With sugar's devil fruit, at least everything is kind of tied in by the concept of youth and playing with toys. But with Viola's fruit, it's just four unrelated strung together powers. Great idea, undeniably effective, but shame on whichever tryhards brought them into existence. Back to brilliance, now it's the fude fude no mi, the ability of every artist's dreams. Because whatever you draw will come to life and is used primarily in the series to bring to life a series of subjectively terrible drawings. I say subjectively because I actually quite like them. I have a great soft spot for Ryunosuke, Nekozaemon and Torasaburo, which if you didn't know are all named after Momonosuke, Kinemon and Kanjuro respectively. This was of course due to one of the greatest twists in all of One Piece, where Kanjuro was drawing terrible on purpose to sabotage the group. But I think that only goes to show just how brilliant this fruit actually is. Because even when consciously trying to use it terribly and as most inefficiently as possible, it turns out the power of even the worst artist's imagination is still just too strong. And I should also mention that this fruit exists in stark contrast to the art of autonomy, a fruit for people who like the idea of being an artist, but not actually making the art. And also heavy doses of plagiarism. None of what Jola made was original. To the world of literature now, and here's a devil fruit that I think a lot of people just forget even exists, the Buku Buku no Mi, which gives its user the ability to become a scary ghost by telepathically controlling physical books, but also traveling inside said books and even bringing those book worlds to life. Criminally underutilized in the series. It's like the inverse of Luffy's devil fruit because this is all about bringing other people's imaginations to life. This fruit was clearly dreamt up by me in high school, where instead of studying for geography because it was a boring subject, I consistently plunged myself into the thickest fantasy novels I could find. This isn't a traditionally well-recognized fruit because it's not great for punch fighting, fight battling, or even battle punching. So a lot of people really disregard the truly magical potential behind it. I will say that one apparent drawback is that its user seems to absorb all of the instances of the letter C from people's writing. Because all of those Cs are planted firmly on Mont Dor's thick behind. Again though, such a great idea and absolutely perfect for the more introverted among us. However, one idea took introversion to an even more extreme level and resulted in one of the most versatile power and popular devil fruits in all of the One Piece being the Ope Ope no Mi. And this fruit was almost certainly dreamt up by someone with a very clear idea of personal space. And I believe it may actually serve as this world's first recorded case of social distancing. Because here's the idea. You see this circle? This is my circle. You can't step into my circle. And if you do, I reserve the right to govern all of your bodily functions, including whether or not your body actually continues to function. The one thing I can't quite reckon with yet is the perpetual youth surgery, because we have two potential options for why such thing exists. Either it was discovered by a later user of the fruit, someone a bit more creative and a lot more desperate than the original dreamer who figured out a way to save someone close to them. That, or there's the slightly more tragic option, which is that the original creator's greatest desire was to find a cure for a certain disease, and the only way to get there was by developing the very specific abilities of the Ope Ope no Mi, which would have been incredibly selfless because that person would have knowingly forfeited their life. Otherwise, just imagine being the first person to discover that power. You know what? I think I could make you immortal. All I need to do is this and that and whoops, I'm dead. Thanks a lot, magical fruit. And speaking of, we now have only three fruits left to examine. These are the best of the best when it comes to creativity and I absolutely cannot wait to show you number one, mostly because I think it may be a bit controversial, but it is undeniably the best idea. I mean, you can go ahead and try to deny it, but I'm just going to deny your denial. Meanwhile, here's a big old bear currently acting as the containment unit of the Nikyu Nikyu no Mi, one of the simplest possible ideas resulting in one of the most absurd suites of powers. What everything boils down to here is the desire to have super soft bouncy paws. These paws being so soft and bouncy that they can repel anything. Physical things like say rocks, and I can't think of any others at the moment, abstract things like pain, and even interdimensional existence 
senses like spooky depression ghosts. The user can even repel themselves or others to any location on the planet, thus making this the first and currently only devil fruit to be capable of utilizing the entire globe, thus putting Pitbull to shame and making Bartholomew Kuma the real Mr. Worldwide, or at the very least, definitely just Mr. Wide. In fact, there was only one thing that Kuma was unable to repel with his powers, and that was his inevitable fate of becoming a man bulk transport slave. So from that perspective, not a great fruit, but from every other perspective, I think an argument could genuinely be made that this is the best devil fruit, not the best idea, just the best period. That's an argument for another time though, because this video has already gone on so long that our morning sun is rising, bringing with it the Hito Hito no Mi model Nika. And it's just, it's so hard to put this into words because you have to compress the entire idea of imagination into a poor unsuspecting fruit. What I'd love to know is which came first, the legend of Nika or this devil fruit? Because I could see it happening either way. Someone was inspired by a myth and created a fruit based joy boy, or someone's ultimate desire was simply to make people smile. And so the Nika legend was born as a result of the original user. Either way, great idea, but still not the best. So are you all ready for the best devil fruit idea in all of the histories? Because that would be Foxy's no 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 me, and no, I am not joking. Putting Foxy to one side, this fruit was the dream of an absolutely brilliant person who was such a visionary that they were already thinking of this world on an atomic level. This person dreamt up their own custom photon and made it a reality. Granted, yes, that reality then did morph into a rotund fox with a hobby of cross-dressing and cheating at various piratesum games until he got thwacked in the face by a rubber man wearing an afro. But look, that's just the beauty of science. You never know what your discovery is going to lead to. But at the core of everything is an idea. And the idea of the Noro Noro no Mi is unrivaled in all of One Piece. Meanwhile, if you'd like to see us name and shame the worst devil fruit ideas, then that video is certainly coming up next.